Hello, lovely viewers. My name is Karen Eileen Gordon. Cute little hyphen in the middle, Karen Eileen. And I'm a professional chameleon, otherwise known as an actor. I have a very unusual journey into the world of acting, where I'm now fully entrenched and blissfully happy to be. I was in the corporate world before I actually went to Harvard. I'm, I graduated from Harvard. I have a degree in economics. And then I went over to Paris, where I worked in a Paris bank called Société Générale. It sounds very wonderful. So I speak French, and that was my, one of my passions in college. So I went over and I worked in the currency exchange division of Société Générale, which at the time was, I think, the number two bank in Europe. Uh, or sorry, maybe in France. And from there, I went to England for a year. I was in graduate school at the University of Bristol. They have a wonderful sort of very condensed uh, film, TV, and radio production program. It's basically like a squashed version of film school. So um, I was there, and I worked with the BBC. And sort of while I was there, I, I figured out that I wanted to be on the other side of the camera. But, but part of the deal, uh, the fellowship that got me over to the University of Bristol was a Rotary International Foundation Goodwill Ambassadorial Fellowship. Say that 10 times fast. So I literally, my title, I just love to say it. I wish I had a sash and a crown or something, was um, U.S. Ambassador of Goodwill to the United Kingdom. Oh. As an actor, it's very difficult to pick one role that's most memorable because the role that you're doing is always the most m wonderful and memorable. It's such a thrill to work. So um, I am very blessed to be... Uh, appearing on a new hit drama for the Stars Network called Magic City. And uh, season one ended on June 1st, and season two goes into production uh, very shortly in Miami. And the I Internet press had labeled it at one point as a cross between um, The Sopranos and Mad Men. So it's dark and glittery and delicious, and the, it's set in 1959, Miami Beach. The pilot opens New Year's Eve, 5859, and... Uh, it's set in a fictitious hotel that's kind of like the swanky uh, Fountain Blue and Eden Rock that are still alive and kicking on Miami Beach. And the hotel owner is Jeffrey Dean Morgan. And I play Florence, who's this. I love her. If I met her on the street, I'd be her friend. I'd be like, girl, we got to be friends. Um, she's this tough, sassy, mm, smart New York dame. And she's the longtime executive assistant to the head of the hotel, who's, who's Jeffrey Dean. So I'm over the moon about that character. I really, she's at that time, 1958, 59, for a woman to have a position of that kind of power was very unusual. So she's very well educated and she's very crafty and multi layered and she's just delicious to play. Um, plus, uh, everything's so authentic. Like when they say like authentic 1959 wardrobe, they are, they are not messing around. That, like I, and I've said this to people before, I'm amazed that women at that time did not have little mini oxygen tanks going on because those girdles, child, I mean, it's, boy, they just hold in your stuff in a way that I had no modern reference point for. But, but as an actor, it's wonderful because it changes your physicality and you're immediately sort of time traveling. So, you've already got, so they really did from, from the closest to the skin out, everything was completely 1959. So... And am I, am I going on too long? Should I keep? Okay. So that's Magic City. And so the, the other one I want to tell you about is a wonderful independent comedy feature that is now in post-production. It's called A Free Bird. And my character's name was Tammy. And I kind of call her a hurricane in a jar. She's another one I'd be, a, you know, I, like if I met her somewhere, I would be like, you're my sister from another mister. We have got to be friends. And one of the things I love about acting is, you know, shape-shifting. So... She was, I was blonde, they made me blonde for the first time in my life. They spray tanned the heck out of me. I wore frosted everything, frosted makeup and nails with little palm trees painted on them and mini skirts up to my, mm-hmm, you know. And Tammy, you know, she's native of the panhandle of Florida, uh, which is where we partly filmed there in Atlanta. And so she's very street smart and sort of like beer and cigarettes for breakfast kind of thing. And so those two women I love, and I'll give you one more, three, three's the charm. Uh, I'm going to start weeping with gratitude because I've had a, an abundance of wonderful things to share, share with you. Um, I just uh, shot two episodes, guest starring episodes on the Glades on A&E. 
Thank you. She's doing this, guys. <laughs> She's an awesome interviewer. Um, and this character, literally when I was auditioning, I was looking for a photo to use as inspiration. <laughs> and I came across this photo on the Internet of a shark, a real shark. And I don't know if they photoshopped it, but the shark is smiling like the biggest grin you've ever seen in your life. And I was like, that is the energy of this character. And so that's what I used, and I booked it. And so she's a, she was a sharky, smart lawyer named Joanne Riley, and it was so much fun to play a biatch. Just crazy fun. I was so mean to the lead character, I apologized after. So those are my three faves. What I do when I'm choosing a project is... I don't know if this is just something I developed over you know my years of auditioning... I try to go in with no expectation when I'm either reading the sides or a script and just literally feel what it feels like in my body. Like, what is my gut reaction? What is my instinct? Um, so that something that grabs me, um, I sort of feel a little hooray on the inside. And that's, that's how I know. And that can manifest in so many ways. It could be a project that tells a story that's really moving to me. It could be a character whose journey I really love. So it's, it's not one thing, but the overall thing is how does it feel? How does the story impact me or how does the character impact me? Cool. I have so many funny stories from set. It is going to be hard to pick one. Here's one. Here we go. Uh, as your um, lovely viewers may know, Sometimes when you're shooting, uh, either film or television, really anything, you're in, in a studio or on a soundstage, and sometimes you're on location out in the world, somebody's house, a, a restaurant, a building. So for the independent film that I shot, Freebird, we did a lot of locations. And we started shooting in July in Atlanta, in the middle of sort of a heat wave. And I grew up in South Florida, so I was so sassy. I'm like, whatever, I know heat, whatever. I grew up in South Florida. Wrong, 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 wrong. So wrong. Um, and, and as you guys also may know, when you roll camera, often you have to turn off anything that would air condition the space that you're in because you can't be having the hum of the air conditioner in the background or else you're talking about a lot of ADR and the rest of the budget, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So before they turned on the lights, the temperature in the house was 98 degrees. Oh, Karen Eileen went down hard. I literally, I got heat stroke my first day on set. I got heat sick. And so, and literally somebody has a photo of me sticking my head in the freezer in the kitchen, like laying my head on the ice rack in the kitchen to try and cool myself off between takes. And so I proceeded to wander around for the rest of the set, either with a bag of frozen peas or a bag of ice, either on my head or my neck. So peas were my friend. So there is some evidence that I came onto the planet already predisposed to be an actor, filmmaker, writer, because at age seven, here we go, I'm talking about this, yes I am. At age seven, I um, wrote and produced and animated my first short film about a tooth. And I wanted to make it to show to the class. Uh, I guess that was second grade, Mrs. Choice, elementary school. So that was my very first film. And then shortly after that, what I used to do, <laughs> What I used to do after school, uh, 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 not playing with other kids, sadly, um, I used to go into my room and write and animate stories and uh, about these crazy things. Like one of them was about, um, at that time, like $10,000 was such a lot of money. So it was called the $10,000 candy bar because inside this candy bar in a candy factory, somebody found like a $10,000 bill and there was a robber and there was a conspiracy. And I think it was like eight when I wrote it and I had it laminated and I tied it with a little pink ribbon, punched holes in it. And I had them put it in the school library so kids could check it out. I love to write. I love to write. And there's no way for me to pick between acting and writing. I love them equally in a different way. It's hard to put into words. They both um, give me creative glee in a different way. And I, I start in the day jobs that I had um, usually involved writing. I was a advertising copywriter for a while. Um, I worked for the Armed Forces Radio Network. I was the radio PSA writer producer for those guys for a while. And did, I also worked in the PR department of like a a pretty large community college, so I did features and interviewed students and worked with the local papers and stuff. So I like that, but really, like, you know, my, my first, I think my first love was probably writing, and that led me into acting. So um, I produced a mini version of my one-woman show a couple years ago at the White Fire Theater in Los Angeles, part of their 
solo series. Hey, White Fire, hey. Um, and so now I'm working on the longer version, and it's uh, eight characters. So seven characters in me, all genders, all nationalities, youngest is 16, oldest is 93. And I love that. And it's about the the invisible world, the unseen world, and how it's all connected. So, and I'm the I'm your I'm your narrator. Working on stage, as all of you who do it know, uh, is a very unique beast. There is really, there really is nothing that can replace or simulate having a live audience that you're interacting with. That is just really magical and. In my experience in theater, and I've been fortunate to do a nice chunk of theater in my life, and I always love to go back to it. It really fills my well. The audience, you can, I can really feel them on the journey. Uh, and so it's, a, it's an energy exchange throughout the story. And I've had very, very few, even only one really that I can even reference where, uh, for whatever reason, you know, on stage, I felt like the audience was not connected to the to the rest of us on stage and it's it's lonely without them we you know in a live performance they are part of the production and so doing a voiceover or tv or film or even writing um i've need to found a i've needed to find a way to mm, sort of imagine the audience or get that feed in a in a different way because they're obviously they're not there with you I love improv. I'm a big, I call myself a big improv girl because actually the very first thing that I did as a professional actress was improv. Uh, I, I came back to Miami and saw this audition in the paper and I went to audition as a troupe called Mental Floss. And so I went to audition and I expected them to say, you know, come back when you're better <laughs> or, um, or, or I don't know what, or take some classes with us or whatever I thought. But they were like, okay, that was great. Um, we're actually short a woman for tonight's show. Can you hop on stage? And I was like, okay. So into the deep end of the pool immediately. And so I learned on stage as I did. It was the best. I, can't, I mean, it was stressful as all get out. But it was thrilling and fabulous. And so I was with them for four, almost five years doing live shows every weekend in Miami. And I love improv because it retrains you to connect to the thing that I think we all know as kids, which is how to play, how to tell the truth about what's going on in the moment. I mean, I feel like the rules in improv are really good rules for life. And so because that was the first thing that I did in the acting world, I sort of take it into everything that I do, whether or not it's scripted, because I remember hearing my friends who were trained um, in sort of more, more theatrical disciplines, struggling with, well, how do I make these words on the page sound like I've never spoken them before? And to me, it was like, oh, that's improv. So I need to make these scripted words sound like I'm improvising them. I was like, I get it! So that's what I love about I love everything about improv. There's nothing about improv I don't love. It's delicious. I love accents and dialects. I've always been so intrigued by how other people sound, both from different parts of this country and different parts of the world. And, you know, of course, when I went to England and studied there, um, it's brilliant, it's delicious to just listen to the way they speak. Because, you know, we, um, we, we both say that we speak English, but we really do not. I mean, they speak English and we speak American. And um, I, have, I have family from the South, um, Richmond, Virginia, actually, my, I have family who says sugar pie and honey bunch and sweetie plum and one of the favorite, um, you know, um, commercials like voiceovers I ever did was, um, this like Southern bombshell. So she didn't quite sound like this. Let me see if I can find her. She, she was sort of like a film noir character and she talked all breathy like Jessica Rabbit all the time. Pass me a, a soda before I faint. So she's really fun. And, um, I have family all over the place. I also have family from New York. So my mom's from the Bronx. She's kind of a, a tough broad, but she's a glamour puss, you know. She's tough and glamorous at the same time, you know. And so I have a lot of family who I'm not going to curse on this show, obviously, right? But I have family who, like, to them, you know, the F word is just like seasoning. They throw it, how the F are you? What the F are you doing? You look effing great, you know. So I sort of grow up around that, right? And then, you know, when I was still a copywriter, um, one of my, you know, close associates was from India. Her name was Usha. 
her name was Usha and she talked like this and so I used to practice with her to see do I have the right accent and she was so lovely to let me sort of be a horrible speaking woman like this and she schooled me so now I sound almost authentic almost and let me think where else do I love to go well um I speak Spanish and I speak Spanish and I think that in my life I was a Latina which means in another life I think maybe I was a Latina a girl who speaks Spanish and so I can speak um, the English with the Spanish accent which I really like a lot and of course I lived in Paris so I speak French as well I speak French as well and um, you know so it's helpful sometimes to uh, to talk uh, the English with a French accent and I did a, a film I did a film where I get to uh, improvise so I did the improvise in French on the set it's very nice and uh, my grandmère my grandmother she's from uh, Rus, uh, uh, Russia um, um, Uh, that is hard to find after all this travel. Let me see if I can find Russia. It is missing at the moment. Uh, uh, the Russia talk like this. She go. She would. Uh, she like borscht. She make borscht for us. Borscht beet soup. Make borscht. And she like drink tea with sugar cube. One lick cube. One drink tea. So little girl, I see grandma. Uh, sugar tea. I decide to eat the sugar cube. Drink the tea. Six cavity. Six. So, there's this little thing called the internet, you guys may have heard of, and I want you guys to be able to find me, so you can go to my website, it's very sassy, it's becoming sassier by the day, I uh, post a lot of photos there, fresh video, tasty fresh video clips right off the press or the, out of the oven, it's a completely mixed metaphor, but you guys totally get it. Uh, I'm also a Facebook girl, so please... Get a pen and paper if you haven't already. You don't need to memorize these. It's too hard. Something to write on. Not the wall. Okay? Um, and I'm a Twitter girl. Love to hear from people on Twitter. So if you're in Twitter land, please, please go and tweet up a storm. I'd be happy to hear from you.